Hey, I'm uh, Joe uh, Rossiter. I'm here for the launch of Spain, uh, my first book uh, here in Secret Kingdoms uh, in Madrid. I'm so delighted to be here. Uh, David has kindly uh, kept a nice little space for me here and uh, I've been walking around Madrid uh, trying to get my bearings again after a number of years. I'm absolutely loving it. Uh, the atmosphere of Madrid comes back to me just like it does in the book. And I'm so happy to be here and hopefully um, it's going to be uh, plenty of guests here this evening. A very special author evening here at Secret Kingdoms. We're launching Joe Rossiter's first book, Spained, which I understand, we'll hear a lot more about it, I understand is a novelisation of Spain in the 1990s. They say if you were in Spain in the 1990s, particularly in the Marcha Madrilena, the Movida Madrilena, and you can remember it, you probably weren't there. <laughs> Joe clearly vaguely remembered it, and has fictionalised what he can remember. So without further ado, a very warm welcome to Joe and to Ender. First of all, thanks to everybody for coming, for David for hosting us, a uh, big friend of the publishers, we have a lot of events here. Big uh, thanks for Joe for coming here, all from all the way from Ireland. This is actually the first day I've ever met Joe in my life, even though we published him. All our talks have been on, on Microsoft Teams. Probably the last one. Probably the last. Uh, but just let me say, uh, for us, we work with a lot of writers, we have a few in the room who are publishing the future. Uh, it's, he's been an absolute pleasure to work with. Uh, he's a great writer. I really encourage you to read his book. He really captures a vibe and an essence. And Roy, who's written a review in the Madrid review of his book, uh, over there Roy is, uh, he captures the universality of the ESL experience that we, that we are living right now in the 2020s. And so there's a lot of points of connection uh, to Joe's book. Uh, I really admire Joe as well because he's an Irishman who has a deep love of Spanish culture, which I really love to see in people looking outwards. He loves coming here exploring the great gastronomy and culture that this country has in abundance. Uh, and also as well, uh, he's been a dream to work with because he's been so proactive. Uh, you know, half of his town has bought his book, so thank <laughs> you so much for that. Uh, so without further ado, I won't go on too much. I want to get Joe into the conversation. Uh, Joe is a very literary man. Uh, maybe we'll start in a very surprising way, specifically who is in your book and what happens in the story? Right, well there's a whole bunch of people in this room that are in it, um, so it's very, they just don't know that. Um, so, uh, right then, you call it ESL, we, uh, I was a, t a TEFL teacher when I came here in 97, so um, who's really the storyline is about, um, I suppose, Phil, who's a, a guy who's trying to sort out his life, he's been, he's been here a few years and um, he's trying to sort out uh, what he's going to do with his life. He, he's slowly becoming a, a travel writer instead of a TEFL teacher and um, what's it called, and there's a number of characters that are in and out of his life and um, what happened was the lady that brought him to Spain in the first place and, and introduced him to everything, uh, they, they fell apart after a short while and he's not with her anymore. And there's another on-off relationship that he's in that he's, he's kind of realising it's a bit toxic and he doesn't like it anymore. So as he's trying to extricate himself from that, that uh, relationship, the, the ex from years earlier just happens to be, by surprise, uh, found by one of his friends and thrown into the mix sort of thing. So he's kind of going, geez, what do I do here? So it's him over, as, as it's spaced over a week. So it's literally him kind of realising, uh, well, at the end of the week, everybody's back to work and I need to sort out my life basically and see what's going on. So he, he basically... I suppose you could call it hedonistic. Um, he's at a lot of parties and uh, he's trying to get things together and he's, he can't, like, I mean, he's uh, probably very non alcoholic and he can't really understand. Uh, he's trying to sort everything out, but he can't work it out really, really well for himself. And uh, the, the, the ladies kind of mess up his life or make things very difficult for him. I can see where this journalist describing this scene. How was that experience of writing that newspaper article in the book? Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it, but I mean, I've been to bullfights um, when I was here in Spain years ago, there's uh, the San Isidro bullfights around the council, like in April, there's like, uh, well, there used to be, I don't know what it's like anymore, there used to be 28 days bullfights, um, so uh, at the time I went to a couple and kind of saw what was going on and I thought it's very visceral and uh, regardless of what anybody thinks of it, it's basically, it is, you know, depending on what's what sort of situation you're in, it can be a life or death situation and uh, I did see somebody getting gored particularly bad in, in uh, Las Ventas and I think that got across and then um, obviously you know, I, I come to Spain most years and in Andalusia a lot of the bullfighting is very tourist oriented and you know it's, it's a big box the big, the big guys but really it was in Toledo there was a massive thunderstorm and it was like geez so I, I got that into the story but also going down with the guards so so beautiful you have to get in and it's kind of too contrasted like um, Marbella uh, the other side is, I suppose I've been in Marbella 20-something times at this stage, um, 
I've been very, very lucky to be uh, there. Uh, my, my wife's family have had an apartment in there since the nineteen since nineteen seventy seven, I think it is. So I um, we we go down there pretty much every year, bar two years of COVID. And um, but for me, like I have a lot of friends down there, a lot of uh, people that I, I would call ex exceptionally good friends, uh, living in the block where we stay. And um, but they brought me around to show me Marbella, and um, because they're Spanish. It's a totally different side. It's not the you know the Primera Linea kind of uh, mm. side of Spain that it, I suppose everybody that gets off a flight and goes to Marbella kind of you know sits in a restaurant on the seafront and buys an expensive canyon wherever like. But I haven't been in those places because the people I, I know have brought me to other places and showed me a completely different side. Well, here we are at the book launch of Spain by Joe Rossiter, who I think is behind me. And, uh, and it's, a, it's a highly recommendable book, uh, as Spanish people might say. Uh, it's about a group of ne'er-do-wells in the 90s who are, <laughs> who are having a, quite a rough time as they stumble their way through life. It's very fun, it's very fast read, and I think it captures a lot of the feeling of being uh, young, and drunk in Spain. Okay, it was uh, quite interesting because you, you've got like first person perspective on all these different details that you, you see when you come to a new place. Uh, it's very direct, it's very colloquial in a way too. So it's really easy to like get involved in the story straight away. Um, the other thing too is that it's always interesting seeing a perspective on a country from a person who's not in that country whether politically, socially, or whatever. It's always a good thing, and uh, Joe's done a great job. <laughs>